Business Saturdays. Welcome to Small Business Saturdays video series with your host and my husband. And my dad, Aaron Montgomery. Join the conversation. Let's talk some business. All right, welcome in to Small Business Saturdays. My name is Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me at OurSuccessGroup.com. Hopefully everybody is having a fantastic Saturday today. Uh, I am super excited. We just came off of an amazing workshop program that we did called The Five Keys of Marketing, and uh, it was a great success. And just watching all the momentum and, and how people are moving forward in their business and, and some of the cool things they're going to be doing into the fourth quarter here to really boost their marketing. Uh, it was really inspiring. So um, today I want to recap that a little bit, but I also want to recap kind of the, the general overhaul all feeling of what it is that we're trying to do with our success group. And and I've got a friend of mine, a good friend of mine that uh, we, we met a while back. We're going to get into the history here. And so without further ado, I actually want to bring that friend in here and uh, let, let's get, let's talk to Mr. Sean Stewart. Sean, how are you doing this afternoon, sir? I'm good, Aaron. How are you? I am doing great, man. I appreciate you uh, taking some time on your Saturday to come uh, chat with me about business. I know it's a passion of yours too. So uh um, let, let's, let's start here. Um, because I, like I said, I do want to kind of give people a recap overview of what we did in the five keys of marketing workshop, but I think we need to go back even further. We get into the basics. So maybe give, give us a little bit of your history first and, and, and kind of how we met and that kind of thing. So why don't you start us off there? Well, we met back when I was uh, working and living in Oklahoma city, I believe I was working yeah. for a little family owned company called the paper Ranch. <laughs> Yep. So we were playing in the same sandbox doing trade shows and we're very like-minded in that the attrition is the one thing that drives us nuts about the industry that we're in. We love this industry. We love seeing people grow, as we said, and the attrition is one of those things that we kind of got together right away. And though we were enemies, we were friends right off the gate. <laughs> Frenemies, right? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, right. So I spent about 10 years in Oklahoma City and then ended up with an opportunity to move out to Arizona. From Oklahoma, it was kind of like any opportunity might be a really good one, but yeah. it was a neat opportunity. It was we we're trying to build a little network called the National Graphics Network, kind of put together something that would get rid of the attrition, which is yeah. proved to be a fool's errand at the time. We didn't have yeah. an errand at our back at the time. So <laughs> a fool's errand it was. We spent about a year and a half doing that, and then I went back and started working for another distributor. And, the industry. Nice. So I've stayed in the industry and done trade shows, as you know, and that's kind of why we've been playing in the same sandbox as long as we have. So yeah, really yeah. excited about what you're doing and learning more about it and, you know, showing people how to, to cost stuff and people go in and they buy at a trade show all excited, looking at the dog and pony and the person selling it and fall in love with the, the concept and the idea of making a million dollars. And then they get it home and they go, does this thing print money? So having the five keys and all the things that you guys are doing in the background is something that I've really, uh, I never really had the content. So I'm really excited about it and, and moving forward here, working with you guys and seeing how we can uh, kind of counter pollinate, you know, let's, let's get this thing growing in, in all the directions. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, and like you said, you've got a, a great history in, in this industry, in that space, the, the family you worked with, the, obviously people I respect a ton and, um, you know, and that's why, even though I guess technically at the time we were uh, competitors, I don't know, that, that word's always so funny to me because some of my, my best friends, I guess technically I was competitors with. Um, but, you know, even back then, right, we saw that, right? We, we saw it. We, we, we would sit down and have conversations about, you know, the day that had the people that we talked to, the people that were walking away with systems or paper or packages or whatever. But we knew da deep down in our heart that, gosh, some of them are going to struggle, right? It just, it, it's the reality of it. They're going to struggle. And so I guess for you back then, and even as kind of you've grown, continue to grow in, in this industry here, what has been like the common denominator when you've seen people struggle? What are they missing? I mean, one of the biggest things for me, and the reason I'm not the greatest salesman in the world is I'm a technical salesman. You want to make yeah. sure that everything you sell, you know, inside and out and you can support and if yeah. you truly support those customers, you don't have enough hours in a day to support a million customers. Yeah. Unless you have the content in a place and it's done well enough that they're true resources for these people. So with the hands-on, that's really kind of where I, I strive to keep my customer base moving forward and growing. 
because I, I mean, like I just told you before when we were talking, I have the same 405 I did the day I started in this industry. And the reason for that is I hate the attrition. I want my customers to be able to get a hold of me. I'm not selling them something and turning my back. Yeah. So a lot of times the biggest problem is people see that. It's just like fishing. If you got a real shiny lure, the fish might bite it. You know, he bite it and then it, it gets landed on land. That's not the greatest situation for that fish. Yeah. So when, when we're taking and you got that shiny stuff, the glitter, all that stuff at the trade shows, the mom and pops, moms love it. And I'm not taking anything away from them. I, I sell to them. They're a great target demographic. But when you take and you've got all that shiny stuff, they buy it at the show and take it home. They get home, they don't know what to do with it. So I think one of the biggest things is the service and support that always has them. Yeah. Yeah, getting getting that service and support, and and I, I I've even seen like being open to that service and support, right? Sometimes pride gets in the way of for folks, right? They they do that, they make that investment, they they take it home, they don't know what they're doing, they struggle, struggle, struggle until they get just so frustrated that they're kind of done anyways. But then that's when they finally start reaching out, and they're they're in that place of like, uh, you know, I I hate this. It's like, well, okay. Uh, have you really figured it out? Right. You, you, you need to grow to love it. And so, you know, what I've seen and, and I'd love your take on this too. And, and what I've seen is that the people that are willing to be the action takers, the people that are willing to ask for help when they need help, the people that are willing to, you know, I heard this the other day, somebody was talking about that the worst four words in business is I already know that. Right. Because then you've you've just decided your your preconception is already. Well, I already knew that. Right. So how do you become successful in business? Well, you need to build a foundation. You need to know your numbers. You need to write all these things that we talk about with our success group. And people go, well, I already know that. Okay, but you're not doing it. Right. (laughs) Um, So with that being said, um, what as as you see people struggle with those kinds of things, you know, what are you helping them with? How, How are you you showing them that? that that foundation's important. I mean, it's a lot of, so you don't have to motivate anybody at a trade show. They're there because they want to be there. They want to learn something. They want to potentially yeah. buy a new piece of equipment to add to their business, right? Yeah. So yeah. they're excited that day. They pull the trigger and now we're 30 days down the road. And if they're not running the thing, that motivation is falling off and they're going, oh, I'm so busy with this other stuff. I can't only have time for this. And So a lot of it is motivation. And then also when they say they know the cost, a lot of times they really don't. If you can show them their true cost and show them the market value, you show somebody a market value on a t-shirt, a lot of times they'll go, oh, I can't get that much for a shirt. Yeah. What do you mean you can't get that much? Not with that attitude. You absolutely cannot. (laughs) And you're selling the wrong demographic. (laughs) Listen, there's a lot of things you can make that are very cheap and you can find a profit margin on t-shirts, not one of them. Yeah. They need to be making money there. So a lot of times it's motivation too. Yeah. So they buy it and they're all excited and you know, you had a great time at the show. You maybe even went out for a pop after it or whatever, you know, thirty days down the road. If you haven't followed up and, and made sure that they've got that thing plugged in and that they're moving with it, who knows? Especially in some of these printing systems, they get it, they set it up, they don't touch it. The next thing they may have to do is replace a print vendor. Yeah. Something like that. And then they're losing all motivation and money. And so everything that was great about it is no longer great about it. And that's why you see bad reviews because it's yeah, not good yeah. service support. And otherwise, the motivational factor is also huge. I mean, yeah. everybody wants to make a million dollars. No one wants to work a million dollars worth of work every yeah. year that month. You know what yeah. I mean? I'd yeah. rather make a million dollars for working three hours a day. But you know what? That doesn't exist. So if you yeah. want to grind and you want to make the money, it's out there. Yeah, for sure. I love it. I love it. Yeah, this is interesting because, you know, I get an opportunity to speak at a lot of different shows and, and talk to people. And one of the things that I always ask when I'm out there speaking to people um, when we're talking about the Business Foundation stuff is, you know, just be honest with yourself. Show of hands. Who here knows how much it costs them to operate their business, you know, each hour, right? Just to just open your doors each day. What do you know what that costs you? Right. And, um, un- you know, most people kind of like look away. I mean, I've been to shows where I talked to at least 150 people in, throughout the classes and had zero people know what it cost them to run their business, yeah. yet they were in business, right? So I guess my question for you, Sean, and I'd love to have your take on this, is why do you think that is? Right? Why, why do you think that people, you know, they, they love making the stuff, right? They get there, the shiny object, they, they that part's all great. But like you said, when it's time to kind of do that work that – they need to do to be able to be successful why do you think they miss that part 
Well, because at the trade show, they're not teaching absolutely everything, or if they are, it's out of your booth and you're not telling everyone just yet. Yeah. But people buy the thing, they get it home, and they don't know exactly how to make the money with it. And like I said, you get home, and if you have an embroidery or a screen print company and you buy a sublimation system, when you get home, if you start getting a little more business on the embroidery size, it's, it's not very difficult to justify going, I'm going to put that off another week. And all of a sudden that week just snowballs. It turns yeah. into a lot more time. But you bought it. You got it. It's sitting there. It's a, it's yeah. a boat anchor until you put it into action. So yeah. what, once you make an actual plan, when you buy that system, you go, okay. And you and I talked on this briefly. It's yeah. a lot of times people buy something. If they don't have a job for it right out the gate, they don't start that snowball effect of building that business and getting yeah. You know, once you build a book of business, they will come. It's just like the field of dream. Once you build it, they will come. So build yeah. that book of business. Action. That's another word you use a lot that I love. I mean, yeah. If you take action when you get that piece of equipment, you go out, you drum up, you do the marketing, you know, you let people know what you've got. You can't just hope that your embroiderer is going to need some sublimated shirts if you bought a sublimation system. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. we'll certainly tell that guy. Hey, you're picking this up. Guess what? This is something else I'm doing now. You know, get yeah. out there, market it, show it to people, and find a market that you're excited about. Yeah. You know, like if it's if you're an alcoholic, hey, to use that word, like you know, go to bars, sell them beer, sign the chat passes. If you're a big soccer player, you got soccer jerseys, things like that. There's just markets that you get excited about. Get into that market, sell into yeah. that market, and you'll be more successful as a sales, right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yep. In fact, uh, Jerry says this all makes sense. So good. We're, we're on the right path here. Um, so, okay, here's here's another thing that you and I have talked about a little bit personally that I'd love to share with people that are tuned in here to Small Business Saturdays. Um, just, uh, okay, you kind of mentioned it. We have this same passion to eradicate the attrition in our industry. And like you said, probably comes from a lack of education, lack of, you know, that being showcased in our industry. Um, because I know for a fact, because I worked for a, a distribution company, just like you have in the past too, where they get so many new customers a day that the attrition rate doesn't affect them. They just have to get people excited about it on the front end and keep getting those you know new customers each day. And so and, and, and this is not to say that they're doing a bad thing or a disservice or anything like that. It's just the reality of it. They don't have the time or the need or the desire to do that. So, you know, again, that's where I think that was where your head was at with uh, NGN. And that's where my head's at with OSG. So how, how, do, we, how do we carry that flag, right? <laughs> how do we get people to understand that that's as important, if not more important than that new shiny, you know, whatever DTF is the latest craze these days, right? Yeah. What, what's, what's the strategy? <laughs> well, I mean, you're doing a lot of it currently. I mean, yeah. You're living in it right now. It's sure. The strategy sure. is getting out there. I mean, marketing and showing it to people. We know people, you go out to a trade show and you see how many people, as long as you can put together something succinct and to the point and, and go, look, this is what we're looking at. And this is, Success stories obviously are helpful too, but yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's going to take a little while to get there, but you're building something here where people are starting to understand and see that. Understanding a true cost and the market value is one of the most important things. I see customers that I go through it and show them, all right, here's what it is. I mean, they show them your spreadsheets and okay, here's how it works out. Here's, here's how you get to your market value. And they'll be like, no, wait, what? How, how am I, how, I can't do that. Okay, so what's happening is they're, comp they're competing but they don't know what they're doing. The people that are competing yeah. with each other the most on this stuff are killing each other. If yeah. this guy's here and he goes, oh, well, I can do it here. And then he goes, well, I could do it here. Well, he's already not making money. And then this guy's like, well, I'll do it here. Now they're killing each other. No one's yeah. making money. And there's always enough out there for everyone. Everybody yeah. knows somebody that would buy from you that would not buy from me and vice <laughs> versa, right? Sure. So there's Absolutely. enough out there for everybody. It's, it's going to take us getting out there and really kind of getting in their faces and showing it. And people, it'll take a little while once it gets traction. People will feel the dreams. You will feel the dreams. <laughs> they'll come. Will. Absolutely. Holy yeah. cow, that guy that bought it down the street from me, his business has doubled. He's into a bigger building. Holy cow, what's going on? Oh, all he did was really listen, learn, find out his market value, and not shoot himself in the foot anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. a lot that is the attrition is people competitively killing each other in this industry for yeah. a job, and they don't recognize that. You know, consider your time, your electric, everything else that's going into it, yeah. and now you've actually 
giving a shirt away. Actually, you paid them two dollars and twelve cents for that shirt. Yeah, you yeah, know? exactly. And you, you can't survive that way. So yeah. it's yeah. going to take a while to get the traction. But I think what you're doing currently is the right thing. Talking yeah. people that show up to a small business Saturday conversation just for the motivation. Those are the people you want. Those are the people sure. that you can count on to be successful because they're investing in their success while there's college football. So, <laughs> That's true. That's you know, true. You're, mean, you're, 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 you're investing time with me while there's college football on. So I appreciate that very much, man. Um, no, I see and that's what I love so much about that. Again, I think that's why we've always had this commonality in this. Uh, we always have such great conversations because we see that bigger picture, right? We see the understanding of it. And, and it is, it is, it's about persistence. It's about continuing to show up even when maybe nobody else is showing up. Right. And so I'm sharing this for the folks out there that, you know, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a year and I just am not getting where I want to go and blah, blah, blah keep with it, be consistent, but, but let's get a little bit better every day, right? It's, it's that definition of insanity. If you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result, right? So hey, you always got to be getting better. I already know that. <laughs> I oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I did. I thought I was. You can't teach me anything. I already knew that. <laughs> I already knew that. Yeah. No, exactly. that's the other thing. Be receptive. Yeah. Learn something yeah. always. Somebody knows something that you don't know, and they're probably in front of you. You're just. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Can't no, I, <laughs> I love that, and and I, I heard that the other day. Actually, somebody uh, had said, you know, the the four worst words in your business could be, um, I already knew that. Right. And, yeah. and then that's like you said, you're not being receptive to learning. I always tell people this, I, I say sh- playful out what act as if act as if this information could work and then put it into action. And then if it doesn't, then you can say, okay, Aaron, you're yeah. crazy. Right. But until you put it into action, and you actually do the work if you've already decided that, you know, why, why waste my time? Or I don't know, that's not for me. Uh, that's probably going to put you in that category of you put it into action and it didn't work. I mean, you failed, but you can always pick it up, try again, find a new way and Correct. figure out how to get there. You don't put it yeah. in action. Oh, well, I know that doesn't work. Well, maybe it does. If you squeeze a lemon on it, I mean, who knows? Yeah, exactly. Something and, that you could do a variant that may make it work. So. Yeah, exactly. And the other part of that too is even when something doesn't work, you're still further ahead than before you actually took the action because now you have the information. Yeah. Right now, you you have better information to the next time make it a little bit different decision. So maybe it didn't work exactly how you did it in that moment, but the information you learn from that will allow you to then try something like that or or, or, or different. And you'll have that information. So it's something um, I used to tell people all the time. I mean, when learn from your mistakes. I was never afraid to put anything in a heat press. Yeah. You can ask Linda, you can ask anybody at any of the I worked for in the past. I would take and I I'll parchment, parchment, and whatever I wanted to put in there, if it melted, it melted. But now I know you cannot do that at that temperature. You know what I mean? You can't be afraid to learn. Yeah. 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 That, that's funny. That brings up a story because you, you're exactly right. You can't be afraid to, to do that. I remember this was years ago, actually, probably before I met you um, when I was uh, selling direct to garment printers. And, you know, at the time, the, the technology was more bleeding edge than cutting edge. Um, and, you know, it, especially when we first started making dark shirts. And they didn't always come out so great, right? It was a bit of an art form to get the pretreatment right back then and all that other yeah. stuff. And um, I remember one time it sold a, a, a machine to somebody and I got a call back from them a, a couple weeks later going, okay, I got it all set up and uh, I printed the first shirt and it's ruined. And I'm like, uh-huh, and? And like, no, no, I ruined the shirt. I'm like, okay, and? <laughs> they they just couldn't figure that out. It's like, uh, okay, yeah. So here's the deal. You're, more, <laughs> you're gonna right? you you're gonna okay? have a couple of mistakes, and that's a, you know, right? there there is no perfect machine, and, and so yeah, I think that's 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 very interesting. Don't be afraid to try something. Get out there, do it. Um, put it in the heat press. You know, like you said, parchment, parchment. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. Protect the top and bottom, flat, and go. There you go. There you go. Um, all right. So here, here's something else I wanted to talk to you about. One of the things that I've I've really enjoyed about about you is, like you said, you're you're a very technical salesperson. You, you know the equipment. You know you can go out. 
I mean, and you know a lot of equipment too. I know, you mean, you could color profile sublimation. You obviously know a lot about white toner, everything. I don't think there's a whole lot in this industry that you couldn't help somebody with. But yet you always seem to come back to the mindset side of things, right? So, I mean, you could, you could rest on your laurels and just be the technical guy, but you're always helping people with the mindset. Why is that? I'm just like Tony Robbins, baby. I don't know. I mean, I, I like helping people. I, I like yeah. seeing people grow and do well, yeah. especially, listen, if I sold them something, I'm the kind of guy that if they're not successful with it, I'm going to feel real bad when I see them if it's at the next show or whatever it is. Yeah. I want yeah. high fives, not middle fingers. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Just, I like seeing people grow and I like seeing people successful with the things that I put the, you know, in front of them. And that doesn't even just go for the things I sold them. I mean, I've run at shows where we talked about this before. Yeah. Just because I've got, you know, it can do this one thing they want to do, but they want to do all of this, and there's a tool that does all of this. I'm going to take them to the right person, and when they're ready to buy the one thing that I have to offer them, they're not going to hesitate. It's going to be a real easy sale because I didn't BS them on the way in, and I'm not going to BS them on the way out. So yeah. I, I don't know. I just like to see people grow, really. I like yeah. helping people that was the whole concept behind the, the NGN thing that we tried. And that's why I'm jazzed up about what you're doing. And that's why I'm going to you know, be tying myself to your booth in Charlotte. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about that to have you around and um, to, to, you know, because I, here's the other thing I've seen. Like I said, I, I know you've got the technical chops that you could you know handle anything that you needed to handle, but you realize no matter how well they run that piece of equipment, if they don't have the right mindset, to be successful, that that tool is not going to ultimately help them, right? So, so I guess my, my next question for you to kind of piggyback off of that then is, you know, what it, what is the mindset that people need that sometimes they don't have? I mean, a lot of times it's about growing right. It's somebody will be, you know, they're out there and they can make this purchase on this big, big piece of equipment, but they don't need to right now. They've got a lot of business. They need to grow their infrastructure and get to a place where they can support said piece of equipment and they'll go yeah. out and get it. And then they've got too much going on to get it up and running. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. And a lot of times there's, you know, you've got four or five guys you can outsource to and build that book of business before getting it. Like we were talking about, when you buy a piece of equipment and you have jobs, you have to do with it right away. That snowball effect, that building that book of business yeah. is yeah. you kickstart it, right? Yeah, you get you that. You want momentum. to kickstart that part of your business when you buy it. You don't want to wait and get it and get it all set up and then go, okay, now let's go sell our first shirt, or our first mug, or whatever it is. So yeah. yeah, a lot of times it's it's people will be out at a trade show and and buy a piece of equipment that they they see it down the road, they're excited about the potential. But they're not overly motivated. They don't have a book of business driving that piece of equipment just yet. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If we get in a perfect world, every piece of equipment ever sold would come with here's a big chunk of business off of that piece of equipment just to get you you get you moving in the right direction because that's all it takes a lot of times. Just a little push off the hill. Now you got to because people get jazzed up. You know, I mean, I did a lot of it. You did a lot of it. You know how good it feels to sell somebody that you really like and you feel their energy and. They're buying a piece of equipment you know is going to be successful for them. I mean, that is one of the best feelings. Well, those, that translates also into delivering a beautiful job to somebody. Yeah. They're super stoked. The quality is your quality. So it's beautiful. You're very happy with it. They're very happy. With it. It's the same feeling. Yeah. So when, when the contract printer or the printer gets that feeling, it's the same thing. Hair stands up. They go, oh, crap. I like that. Yeah, that's and good. Let's do more of that. that. You want to do it again and again. And now it's a snowball. So yeah. the mindset is it's a lot of motivation and it's also a lot of people just, they're afraid of the no. You can never be afraid of no. I always listen. Don't go, I have to get to this price to get there. Go, you know what? I'm, I'm two bucks more expensive, but I promise you my work is the best work. You'll never be upset with it. You know, you pay a dollar more for a hundred percent promise that your quality is going to be where it needs to be. And look, I'm a charming guy. Why well, wouldn't you buy something? You know, <laughs> and you don't go and shoot yourself in the foot to get that business. And then you're building a book of business the right way. Because there are yeah. people that will build a book of business that is sinking their ship. Yeah. They're yeah. essentially shooting holes in their boat every time they sell something because money is going out the window. And they're yeah. like, well, I got a good business going. <laughs> well, do you though? Yeah. How, how long can you sustain that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. 
Uh, I mean, heck, I'm living proof of that. I was I was on that ship, right? I, I worked with a company that uh, made the Inc. Magazine top 5,000 list, and uh, two years later, they were out of business because every so- time we sold a piece of equipment, we were losing money, right? But you know, they didn't take the, they didn't have the whatever, they didn't have the help to to understand what their real costs were, and and therefore, you know, w- we needed to cover payroll. So let's let's do another discount, <laughs> and it got ugly real quick. So, all right, um, James Ortolani checking in. Hello, James. Good to see you. Um, James, buddy. Yeah. Definitely. So uh, we've got a bunch of people checking in with us earlier. So thank you guys for being here. If you guys have questions for Sean, this is a really cool opportunity to uh, get to talk to somebody that really knows his stuff. So do that while they're maybe putting some questions in there for you, Sean. I want to recap a little bit for people, as I promised. I want to, What we just got done with last night was the fifth night of the uh, five evenings of five keys of marketing is what it was called. And um is this so, the take notes section of the Yeah, this uh, is where you take notes, right? No, <laughs> no I, I, I think, and I'm glad to have you here to actually talk about this because I want to share kind of what, what it was that we covered and then, again, get get, get your take on, on why that could be important for people that maybe missed it this time um, because I actually see this becoming a, uh, a quarterly program potentially, something like that. So we'll, we'll see how that evolves with OSG here. But um, So the very first night, last Monday, Sean, we started off with uh, – defining your customer. And we, we talked a lot about just getting in and, and defining that ideal customer. Some of the things you've already said about, you know, working with places where you've got that passion, right? And and I, I think a lot of people really struggle, especially when they're newer to this with um, thinking that they've got to be all things to everybody, right? Who's your customer? And, and more often than not, unfortunately, the answer is anybody that's got money in their pocket. And while I I understand that, I think it's very counterintuitive because I think, especially when you're starting off, if you can have that place of passion and then that brings confidence and and you're going to be like you talked about, you've got to tell everybody about it. You got to put yourself out there. You got to tell people what you're doing. And if you're telling people what you're doing in a place coming from a place of passion, then your marketing message is going to expand a lot quicker. So that that was kind of the first night, you know, that was a, a big part of that getting into not only who their ideal customer is, but like understanding that ideal customer at a, at a deeper level than just, you know, I sell to females in this age group that live in this area, right? Like what is their problem, right? What, what is the, the problem that you solve for them? So, so that was the first night, Sean, what, uh, what do you think? What, what would you hope people would take away from something like that? Well, so one of the interesting things about that for me is I actually I kind of went through this. I mean, every election cycle, any time that something like that comes up, I, mean, I don't know how big, I know a ton of my customers do big business around election cycles. Yeah. But one of the big things for me is just because you have, and it's the greatest example for me because of just how far apart people are on politics. You want to kill each other. They're so sure of themselves. Every one of them. They're not about our politicians. Anyway, so I would like all of their money. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, I don't care what you do. I want yeah. everybody's money. So the interesting thing about what you're saying is, in this instance, is a great example of you can go in and you can sell to all, and it doesn't have to be you. I got a crazy sister that can sell to the crazies. I got, you know, I got, I got them all covered. I want yeah. everybody. So yeah. there is, there are ways to go out and get it where you just find someone who's passionate in that area that you're not. And go, sure. hey, guess what? You're, you're my new sales force in this area. Go sing like the Ricola man from the top of the mountain. Here's your shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? So totally. I think knowing your customer and then also knowing how to market to the other customers that aren't necessarily your target market or your favorite people on the planet. They are still people and, you know, yeah. they have money. You do want everybody's money ultimately. I'm not yeah. saying yeah. that that's the right approach out the gate, but to be able to build your book of business and get after those different markets that aren't actually your market. Yeah. But knowing your market, like me personally, I mean, sports, stuff like that, I get big into it. Every yeah. single day, I used to train people on all the equipment that I'd sell. And the first thing that like, they would do is I'd make them make a Chicago Cup shirt. Yes, I'm stealing the logo. No, this is not true. No, this is not okay. But it's just for training purposes. <laughs> and it would be because I'm explaining to them as I'm doing it, this is a target market for me. I love this. I'm passionate about this. So I can go after baseball teams, you know, yeah. all the different sporting things that I enjoy very easily. So yeah. 
If I can't go after dance studios because I'd be a creep if I walked into some dance studio, I do have a sister that can very easily fill that area, walk in there, sure, show them sure. the car, something with shine on it. Stuff, yeah, so. yeah. No, it's, and and I love that you, that you you mentioned that because that was really the point, right? We we wanted to hone down into making this ideal customer very clear to us, and, and almost to a point of like where we're having a conversation with one person, because then that allows us to get real clear on what it is that we're selling. But then that's just about the outbound message, right? That didn't mean that if you. <laughs> If I'm only doing if sports is your thing, like you were just talking about, that doesn't mean that the business that you're going to do all the time is only sports, right? You're going to take in whatever's coming in. You're going to attract other people because of how much clarity you have and what you're trying to do with your business. And um, a, a good example of this, a story that I like to tell um, is a friend of mine in, in Fort Worth, Brett Bowden with Printed Threads. He is, I don't know if you know Brett or not, Sean, but uh, you probably do, he, Long hair, total band looking guy, and he is a band guy. He used to, he wanted to be a, a you know a famous rock star kind of guy, mm-hmm. and so when he started his company, that was his that was his thing. He was focusing on having conversations with people just like him that were the smaller bands that wanted to have the same kind of cool merch that the big bands did. They just couldn't afford all of the, you know, buying that much to to get the pricing where they needed it. So he built his business around working with those short run band guys, kind of that mid-level to garage band type people. And he became so good at it and he became so well known at it that the Dallas Mavericks actually came to him and said, Hey, we're looking to have more of a band feel to this program that we're doing, the shirt deal we're doing. Will you print our shirts for us? And he's, you know, he didn't go, Oh, well, you're not a band. You're not my target audience. So no, he said, okay. And then he wowed him with how good he was at his job, and he became their printer from there. So it's it's that counterintuitiveness, I think, that people sometimes get lost in, that, you know, that if I'm honing my message down that far, that I'm only going to be doing business with one person, but it's actually the opposite of that. You're honing it down so you get clarity, and then you're going to attract other people from all different walks of life. And then, like you said okay, here's somebody else, right? Oh, could we go after that? Could we go after that? Then well, you yeah, find the partnerships that you need. Word of mouth, too. I mean, that yeah. word of mouth got them there. It's still the most powerful marketing tool. And now it's on steroids because we've got social media. Yeah, so totally. So everybody you know knows somebody you don't. Yeah. Right? So yep. you take and put something cool into that customer's hands and they post it or they put it out there, they show it to somebody. You know, God forbid you're not making all the band shirts in the world, but you end up with the Dallas Mavericks. Holy cow. I mean, yeah. Wonderful they did okay for themselves, right? Yeah. You, you end up where you're supposed to. You yeah, get things totally. the right way, you end up where you're supposed yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, awesome. Yeah, that's good. So, then day two was, um, we called it Define Your Brand. And, and this was really kind of getting people to get an understanding of who they were as a company, what, what they're, you know, and... And the first thing we said was your brand is not your logo, your colors, your business card. Your brand is your personality. Your colors, your logo, your business card are just indicators of what your your brand is. But really trying to say, what is it that makes you unique, right? What What's your personality? What are the values that you you stand by? And And therefore, when you get clarity of that, then again, you're able to have a much more succinct message. It's going to get across to people much quicker. And um, and then you could tie those two things together. So that, that was kind of the point. We wanted to start there with that side and then have them also turn the mirror around and look at themselves in the mirror and say, hey, who am I, right? What, what's important to me? What are my values? And and what are my strengths? And, and those types of things. So I think that was really cool. I, it, I think people were a little bit, kind of shocked at first they said hey I'm, I'm taking this marketing workshop and yet we're two days into it and all we're doing is a bunch of high level thinking about our business so so when when it comes to kind of talking to people about their brand how, how do you um, talk to people about that well so high level thinking about all we're doing is high level thinking well you never do and if you don't you fail so do so <laughs> yeah yeah fail, yeah uh, as far as like branding so it, the cool thing about that is, I, I mean, I have probably a dozen or, or two companies that are more than one company. I, the, a buddy I was just visiting in Illinois, he started doing one thing, 
and found out that garage floors was another thing that worked off his company. So now he has a window company and a flooring company. And just like that in this industry, you've got a company that is, you know, targeting biker shirts and you've got a, a, a kid that's doing gymnastics and your wife goes to gymnastics. Now you have all the cheer squads and all the gymnastics. You have two companies. You have Glitz and Glamour over here and you have Biker Badass over here. Excuse my language. But you yeah, know what I mean? Right. So as far as branding goes, it, it goes right back to the things that you're passionate about. Yeah. I mean, if you want to have the best attitude, you you have something that you're real passionate about in front of you that you're selling. You're going to be excited about it. And people feed off of that. Yeah. And that good energy is only going to bring in the good energy. Yeah. And that's probably totally why I do well at trade shows. I see you coming from, I mean, I know you, obviously, but I see <laughs> you coming from 30 yards away and I can read your name badge. We're best friends before we shake hands. Yeah. And you're wondering yeah. why, because it's your first show. <laughs> you're wearing a name badge, but <laughs> If you're sitting there, you're having a good time, you're laughing, you're establishing a rapport. That's the other thing that's so big, establishing a rapport. Who's the easiest for you to establish a rapport with? That's your favorite market. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, you know, that's like perfect. For me, it, it's sitting there talking to sports and just chopping it up. Yeah, Those people are it. my people. We have a great time. We're all passionate about sports. We're all nuts. And uh, <laughs> so we get along great. Yeah, I love well, it. There's some people, I'm wearing a golf shirt. That doesn't mean I love going golfing. But if I did and I went out here, I'd have more fun with the guys that I was watching sports with than the really, really good golfer guy. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Time, but, yeah. You know, yeah. Not my for sure. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. Your awesome. brand should more or less build itself just by your personality and what exactly. you get jazzed up and what you got into. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. You, you, what you just said is, is all of it spot on, but that last statement you just made, I think hopefully people really take that to heart there. So, um, all right. So the third night was about picking your path. And um, this was where we got to get into just because all of a sudden you heard TikTok was the latest craze. That doesn't mean that you should, you know, go and figure out how to do TikTok, right? I think all too often people are looking for the latest magic bullet, right? The the easy way out. I think we may have talked about this before we got on air, but that, you know, you were saying it earlier too about, you know, you got to put in the work, right? And so, um, but to focus on what's that magic bullet, what's the latest craze, right? I, I'm not a big fan of that because I believe you need to go and look at what's worked for you in the past. Even if you're a brand new business, right? You've sold something <laughs> somehow, some way. It may not have been an exact sale, but ha ha what's what's comfortable to you, right? Like I'll give you an example, Sean. I was talking to one of our members and he, he was looking into, you know, I need to get on to Etsy and I need to start working on this, this, this. And I was kind of going, this yeah, seems wow. really weird. <laughs> why? And it really was the question, like, why? Right? And so... And he's like, oh, well, you know, I heard that blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, wait a second. How have you gotten most of your business to date, right? Oh, well, I, I'm really connected in my community and I love going out and talking to people. And, and I said, okay, so why don't you just amplify that, right? What, why don't you take that and can you get out there even more? Could you go to another club? Could you start your own club? Could you, right? Like, how do you amplify that before then you go and try to, you know, oh, well, I now, now I need to figure out how to sell online, even though I've never done it before and I don't, not really all that interested in it. So, so that was the third night, really kind of helping people get to that point where, yes, you might augment things with some of the different types of strategies out there from Facebook ads to, you know, even, even TikTok, right? I'm not anti TikTok necessarily, but for me, it doesn't, it doesn't move the needle, right? So why would I spend that time trying to figure out how to be the best on TikTok if it's not really going to move the needle anyway. So, so that, so that was kind of what that, the, you already know your strong suits, you know, correct. I mean, the best course of action, because that's what you've been focusing on. Now you're going to try and learn something new. It's like, you're going back to the bottom of the hill to start climbing again. Correct. Not correct. Focus on what you're good at. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's and, and so fo focusing on that while at the same time, then starting to, again, augment with some additional things, right? So I don't have to put all my eggs into, I keep using TikTok, I'll just keep using TikTok as a, I don't need to put all my eggs into that basket when I know, if, you know, again, I'm a good example of that. I spend a lot of my time on Facebook. So why We're would just I- old enough that we don't know that whole TikTok thing. So here's the thing. There's plenty of people out there that are chief employees that do. Yeah. Give yeah. them the content. Here, do this. Do it twice a week, whatever. And let them Absolutely. 
because they're good at that. That's something Absolutely. they've been walking that path since whenever they came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. Like, I yeah. still don't have it, so there's that. <laughs> so you're not dancing on TikTok, you're telling me? No, oh, that's no dance is on TikTok. Oh, all right. Dancing, you're not <laughs> on social media. <laughs> all right so the fourth night sean was pick your path and or not sorry that we, we that was pick your path um the fourth night was set your plan like basically let's let's actually have a plan <laughs> so we were looking at the 12 weeks uh from the first of october all the way through the holidays as you know we're going to boost our business over this 12 weeks so the first thing we had to do is we had to set some goals right it's one thing to go okay i really want to market hard in the fourth quarter cool. What does that mean? What, you know, how do you know if it's working or not? Right. So, so put a number on it. Whenever we talk about goal getting, which you and I were talking about before, I, I try to avoid calling it goal setting because everybody's a goal setter. I want to be a goal getter. <laughs> I want to be set, like you were talking to me about fishing, right? You're not a, you don't like fishing. You like catching. <laughs> so anyhow, um, so that was what we kind of talked about there. We start there, but then yeah, let's, you don't have to know all the steps, but start, you know, this is a chance to build, build it without any potential things going wrong. We're, we're making a plan. It's the first creation. So give it your best shot, go with your gut and put something down. And, and that way you at least, you know, what you're working towards. Right. So, so that was the plan, the plan is right back to what we were talking about mindset. I mean, yeah. You got a plan. If you have your plan and that now you put it into action, I'll bet you the fix that something about action. Huh? <laughs> How did you know? Shocker, right? <laughs> so yes, fifth night was about implementing action. But then the other part that we added on there was that you've got to have evaluation as well. So a big part, yes, it's great to take action, but to take action and then not evaluate and improve, right? Yeah, we, yeah. I think we, we talked about this already. We said that earlier. Yeah. Accountability is a perfect word for that. Yeah, exactly. You're holding you yourself. Ca- it doesn't, you don't account for it. You look at it and, yeah, well, it didn't work. So let's not keep doing that same action. Exactly. That's the definition exactly. of insanity. Let's not keep doing that yeah. after all. Exactly. Yeah, so that was the fifth night. We, we got into a lot of that, like what metrics to measure and, and how to measure them and then what to do with that that information. And um, So, yeah, it was really awesome. The other thing that we did, Sean, that I uh, – I thought it was something newer. We, we've, we've, we definitely push people, but very intentionally, we hit them with a ton of homework, for lack of a better word. And as we were sharing information, I'm saying, write this. They're, they're, I don't have it with me, but I, we had a 21-page workbook that uh, everybody got that was part of that. And throughout that, they're, they're doing work in it. And so... It was kind of cool because like I kept getting these comments from people like, you know, oh, this is great, but it's it's a lot. Right. I, I'm, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. And I and, and they would be a little bit shocked when my answer was, yep, that's the plan. And they're like, what? <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's the plan, because if you are in that space, you're not going to overthink it. Right. You need to go with your gut here. You need to trust yourself. You need to get back to that mindset that Sean and I've been talking about here of, I believe in myself. And, um, so I'm, and I don't have time to second guess that. So we're going to move forward. So yeah, it's, it's it's been, it was really cool to see that happen. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, Michelle says, I missed the replay last night. So where do I find the replay? Michelle, right back where you would have watched the, uh, um, watched the live version at just right in that same place. So you go, go right back there. All right. So Sean, that was the five keys of marketing. What, uh, what, what, what did we miss though? What, like, what did I know we, we talked miss? about, well, I mean, okay. So people, you've kind of just lived through <laughs> the overview of the whole thing. Yeah. What do you think people should be doing now? Right. That was over last night. What do you think people should be doing now with that kind of new well, found I mean, information? If, if they went all the way through it, we're, we're looking at, action and accountability right yep that's right that's right you're exactly right that's what i was trying to lead you to right yeah (laughs) but but do this for me though because i know again you're somebody that takes action you know you know how to take action you're not afraid to you talked about you know putting stuff in the heat press and stuff like that maybe expand on that a little bit right like what what's where does that come from like because i know a lot of people get like they're afraid to make a mistake right so how, how do you overcome that I, well, so 
from where I'm sitting, if I were selling somebody a, a piece of equipment, I generally will tell every single customer, when you get the piece of equipment, call me, let's go through it. I don't want you getting discouraged. Yeah. And I do try and motivate them to use parchment and to go ahead and just play with it, not be afraid of it. But a lot of times people are afraid of it and they've got money invested into it and they need to make money with it so they don't want to touch it. And it's just, it's you should be, when I say action, we should be playing with stuff. If you just bought the system, a lot of these customers that you're talking about, these guys aren't brand new. They've had their equipment for a while, right? So yeah. they're taking and restarting or at a trade show, I don't know, is that what you see at a show? Do you see a lot of brand new customers? Or are these people that have been at it and they're going, man, we came back here to revitalize and really kind of yeah, see if yeah. we can't get some more traction in our business? Or what, yeah, what do you yeah. see mostly at the show? Well, and not, it's interesting because I think at a show, um, you'll see you'll see some more startups, but yeah. but I'll be honest with you, the the core demographic for our success group is definitely people that that are at it, right? Because unfortunately, yeah, startups, yeah, startups have not banged their head up against the wall long enough that it hurts yet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and honestly, that's where our success group comes into into play is is we're there to you know put the ice pack on your head, yeah, you know, help nice. you. Yeah, help 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 you build your foundation that you missed when you got started, um, and and unfortunately it's tough to share that with the new people because they're not feeling that pain yet. But that's not to to say that you know at a trade show or, or wherever, yeah, we we definitely see that right. And and honestly, it is those folks that are coming to add that second piece of equipment or something like that 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 then happen by and go, yeah. I, Pricing is the hardest thing that I do. And I see you help with pricing here. What? And <laughs> so, um, but I, I think like I you think said, if, the if one thing, so I, and I obviously wasn't there for the whole thing. So I didn't see everything that you guys went through. That's why I'm like, what did you miss? Hmm. Well, there's a lot. I don't, where do I start? No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> um, I just think one of the things that I, I like when we talk about, you know, what gets you fired up? What, what are you excited about? Those are the things that you should be selling. So, of the equipment that you have, what can you make that really kind of caters to that? Yeah. You know, what can yeah. you do that you're not doing currently that sells into that market? Sure. Okay, so if it's fishing, do I have a sublimation in my uh, system? Am I doing lures? Things like yeah. that. Just simple little things. If there's things that you're not selling into that market, if you're selling everything you possibly can into that market, talk to your wife, talk to your girlfriend, talk to your daughter, find another market and saturate that market with yourself. Yeah. But if you completely saturated the market that you're in, you could always expand, you know, nationally rather than regionally if you're all regional. But yeah. I, I would just say one of the things that I like seeing customers do when I say don't don't be afraid of it, play with it, put put it in the heat press, is I love seeing customers come up with new and different things. I had a customer that bought, I think she bought three thousand, uh, you know, the little Starbucks plastic coffee cups. Oh yeah. Not, yeah. They're not solid enough that you can put them in a heat press though. They'll melt. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> so believe me, I tried. <laughs> yeah. She went ahead and she got it and she actually used the, uh, the water slide decal. Like people are using oh, nice. bottles and candles and stuff. And she went to the hobby store and got Mod Podge and it's dishwasher safe. And she got it for 68 cents or 72 cents a piece. She bought like 3000 of them. She made a good chunk of change off of that, I promise. Wow. She didn't get it all right away. She went, I know it's going to take me a little bit to sell through all these, but she now has a really, really cool, nice, digitally decorated uh, kind of disposable type. I mean, you can dishwasher. Their dishwasher's safe. Just yeah. Heat but, yeah, just but not heat pressable. Yeah, just not heat people get outside the box and do stuff like that and find something that wasn't necessarily their niche, but she can sell that into her niche. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, whatever it is, it's a drink receptacle. It can say "Baby's <laughs> Kids" or it can say, you know, whatever you want. I love it. I love it. Oh, what, what, what great inspiration! Thanks, Sean. All right, cool. Well, I, you know, we we've talked here for almost fifty minutes now, so that's uh, that's kind of normally in the wheelhouse thirty to, to thirty minutes to sixty minutes. Um, now. I think I think you kind of mentioned it, but I want to. I'm super excited that uh, you'll be able to be out in Charlotte, and you'll probably be hanging around the booth and stuff like that. So, uh, um, obviously, yeah, if you are anywhere near the Charlotte area, please come see us. We we uh, we would love to to see you out there. What um, number is that? Four twenty eight, I believe, is the correct booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Most important booth you'll stop at if you're at the show. 
There you go. There you go. Michelle says, uh, the date is wrong on the top of it, and it was throwing me off. Huh. I'm going to have to go look at that. I, shocking. I made a mistake. Occasionally, we make mistakes, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Hey, Sean, thank you so much for your time today, man. This has been really fun, and, and I'm looking forward to spending some more time with you next week out there in Charlotte. But, uh, Sean, I, I guess... One thing I always like to do for the listeners here on Small Business Saturday is, is give them a little bit of an extra nugget. Um, and, and, and so I see that there's a, a printer behind you um, and a heat press over there, right? Uh-huh. What's, what's the most underused things that people are making with, uh, with, with what you've got behind you there? What do you, what do you think people don't sell enough of when they have? I mean, I just did. I had a buddy that was going to Burning Man. And so he, I did some shirts. I did decals because there's permanent adhesive back vinyl you can run through there with a vinyl cutter. You can make your own decals and stuff. Nice. I made him some really cool Burning Man decals. Uh, there, there's a lot of different stuff you can do that's really funky. Because it was Burning Man and those guys are all goofy, I made him some temporary tattoos too. Which nice. Which are really cool. I mean, you can do those for under five bucks a sheet and get 12 up on it. And really? Cost an arm and a leg. And yeah. Those goofy people. And that's actually something really big. Uh, I've got some companies in Texas and stuff that separate tattoos because the kids want to go to the game on Friday night. They want to have school spirit, but on Saturday they want to be 21, so they can't have a high school logo on their cheeks. Yeah, yeah. They have to take it off, so you sell them a new one every week. You yeah, know, that's a great idea. I was thinking about like maybe some of the the market for for sports and stuff like that. I mean, um, yeah. you know, I. Being a volleyball nut, the beach volleyball players, they're all now covered with the temporary tattoos at the at the volleyball tournaments. You know, they're sponsors and stuff. So yeah. if you can make those digitally for them quickly, that's pretty cool. That's oh, pretty yeah. cool. There's so much stuff you can do with these things. There's like 40 or 50 different certified medias you can run through. So wow. everything. I, when I run out of cards, I print my business cards. So. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Love it. All right, Sean. Well, uh, I appreciate it. Let's see here. Let's get a couple of comments. Make sure we covered everything. Jerry said, I needed all of this 10 years ago. Better now than never. Absolutely, Jerry. We're glad that you're here. Um, Chuck says, yes, you had the eighth on the last two days of the week. Should have been eighth and ninth. Ah, thank you, Chuck. All right. I made a mistake. Slap on the wrist. Well, I'm good. glad someone's calling you out. Yep, absolutely. Hey, next week for it. A- accountability, baby. We all have to be accountable. And uh, and and so it's always great to get feedback. I appreciate the feedback. Well, awesome. everyone watching, I hope you guys have a great Saturday. Aaron, pleasure, man. I look forward to working with you. See you next week. Yep, we'll see you then. Safe travel, sir, and we'll see you out there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the show here, Sean. So I will send you on your merry way, and I will talk to you very soon. Awesome. Oh man, it's great to have Sean on here, and, and I'm pretty excited about uh, being able to to work with him. Um, it, just to you know have him hanging out with us uh, is going to be cool. So obviously he's got a, a similar passion to to what uh, what I've got, and uh, you know we've always been on that same page. And um, when we had a chance to catch up and talk, and and that word attrition came up again, you know we both had that like <laughs> visceral feeling of like ah hate that right hate hate seeing people good people fail in this business because they had to give up because they just didn't have any help or any direction or any you know ability you know and again not talking down about anybody out there that's you know selling the equipment and supplies it's just it's it's not their job right it's your job as a business owner to learn about how to run your business and the resources are out there I just got to keep showing up, right? And and ask you guys to tell people about us and, you know, work with people like Sean, right? Always trying something new. And and so um, I love it. And I appreciate Sean's time today. Hopefully you guys had a great um, bit of information. Definitely a lot of inspiration there as well. And then uh, we will be off next week. There will be no Small Business Saturdays next week because we will be in Charlotte. Um, I may pop on to do a live video here and there just to, to check in. So uh, look for me uh, in, in different capacities because I am going to be emceeing the Start Here Academy that's happening on the evening of the 15th. And then uh, we will have the booth there that Sean had mentioned, 428, that we'll be hanging out in. But I also get to hang out and have conversations with some of those influencers and stuff like that. So um all about the startup mentality and, and, and living that, uh, that startup life, so to speak. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's what I've got for you here today. I appreciate, again, your time and joining us here this afternoon. I appreciate your flexibility with me. Uh, normally, we're at 9 a.m. We try to keep it like that, but every once in a while, we'll have to change. And uh, appreciate you being here anyhow. 
All right, you guys, have a great rest of your Saturday, and I will talk to you very soon.